Perhaps the most annoying thing you can hear during a fight is, I don't fight dirty, you do. Это, это штамп у вас. У вас кто-то любит заниматься грязной работой. Вы думаете, что и мы то же самое делаем? Нет, это не так. There is a country where the ruling political elite is not only indulging this childish habit of shifting blame, but has turned it into a political tool. This country is, you guessed it, Russia. ЭКБ не претендует на то, чтобы замахиваться на ведущую роль на всем евразийском континенте. А НАТО, обращаю ваше внимание, занимается ровно этим. When faced with an accusation, or for that matter, a friendly remark, government officials are quick to respond with an aggressive mind your own business cue. Все, что делали наши партнеры, так их назовем, Соединенные Штаты в предыдущие годы, обеспечивая якобы свои интересы и якобы свою безопасность, за тысячи километров от своей национальной территории. Югославию бомбили. Под каким предлогом? Что санкции Совета Безопасности, что ли? Где Югославия, где США? Quick test. Did you think it was Russia that began threatening a nuclear war since it started losing in Ukraine? Well, you couldn't be more wrong. Подобное, знаете, понимание своей роли, роли гаранта глобальной безопасности чего-то нанесением ядерного удара по всем, кого США сочтут агрессором. At a first glance, one could think that Russian diplomats and politicians simply lack good manners, that they just don't know any better. Скажите, пожалуйста, вот с таким пафосом пытались когда-нибудь задать вопрос относительно признания якобы суверенитета Косово, ну, например, госсекретаря США или президента США. Вот вот так же с пафосом зайдите на брифинг в Госдеп, на брифинг в Белый дом. But that will raise the question, how come they're the ones in charge of public politics? The thing is, all of those remarks, or at least most of them, have deep political and cultural roots. And for Russian politicians, what about is, is not just a rhetorical device, but a chosen strategy. Поэтому вам и не нравится, когда про Ирак говоришь, ну это же с вас началось. Может быть, мы вспомним про Ливию, как изничтожили. А почему вы смеетесь? Вам не нравится? Russian whataboutism is deeply rooted in Soviet diplomacy, where deflection was the main defense tactic. For example, when the Soviet officials heard something about gulags and imprisoned dissidents, the first thing they remembered were the black ghettos. Every unpleasant comment could be countered with the claim that Americans still lynch non-white people. Even when the US was done with segregationist politics, the Soviets simply could not help but remind the world of the US's far from perfect racial equality record. The Soviets made a whole spectacle of Angela Davis's trip to the USSR. But even apart from that, it found many other buttons to push. Франко палач испанского народа, который разгромил парламент, вергнул правительство законное, избранное парламентом Испании. In short, the U.S. and the collective West were all hypocrites. Today, in the world of freedom, the proudest boast is Ich bin ein Berliner. Warmongers. Громыка принял известного американского сенатора, члена комиссии по иностранным делам сената США Джозефа Байдена. Your leaders were most cooperative, most generous with their time, and did not really abide by international law. On December 25, 1991, the Soviet hammer and sickle flag waved over the Kremlin for the last time in history. The Soviet Union had collapsed, and the new democratic Russia was born. At least it seemed so. Весь американский народ с чувством теплым относится к России, к россиянам, как и россияне к американцам. The popular Soviet rhetoric was also gone, and instead gave way to assurances of cordial friendship and cooperation with the West. Russian public diplomacy has effectively turned into a marathon of promises, those of disarmament, 
protection of human rights, cultural, economic and even military cooperation with the West. <laughs> Even Vladimir Putin, during his first years as president, followed suit. And then came the watershed moment, the 2007 Munich Conference. Открытость, транспарентность и предсказуемость политики безальтернативны. А применение силы должно быть действительно исключительной мерой. Так же, как и применение смертной казни в правовых системах некоторых государств. See what he just did there? Получается, что НАТО выдвигает свои передовые силы к нашим государственным границам. А мы, строго выполняя договор, никак не реагируем на эти действия. Думаю, очевидно, процесс НАТОвского расширения не имеет никакого отношения к модернизации самого Альянса или к обеспечению безопасности в Европе. In Western eyes, this was a definite faux pas and very bad PR for Russia. For the Russians, it was a Rocky Balboa moment, an underdog challenges the world, epic. It may sound crazy and illogical, how could public opinion shift so fast? It was not long since Russians were ready to sacrifice their lives for freedom and democracy. The answer is, having lived through their worst decade in the 20th century, Russians suffered a bout of a familiar disease, resentment. After a difficult time, the West was to blame for their economic losses in the 90s. And it's not just the 90s, the world was chronically unjust to Russia and Russians. It always looked down on them, thinking of them as uncultured, unworthy, dispensable. Probably the biggest Russian trauma of all is the common Western notion that the US and its European allies were the ones that have really won World War II. But here's what every Russian is taught in primary school. The US has only lost 350,000 lives in World War II. The Soviet Union has lost more than 27 million lives. So who has really won the war? For every Russian, this is a rhetorical question. Of course, it was us. Us, as in the Soviet people. For Americans, it was the US. The fact that this great sacrifice, again, more than 27 million lives, was never acknowledged or at least turned into a political gain still lingers even with common Russians, who prefer not to meddle with politics. So when Putin alludes to this, it rings a bell. Same goes for the US actions in former Yugoslavia. The Russians, who consider Serbs to be their brothers, took this intervention very personally. But probably the most impactful of American sins were the military interventions in Iraq and Afghanistan. When the USSR invaded Afghanistan in 1979, it was heavily sanctioned. The US and its allies boycotted the coveted and long-awaited Olympic Games, which were held in Moscow in 1980. The US, however, was never sanctioned for breaching international law, even when it was caught with a crude lie. This is just about the amount of a teaspoon, less than a teaspoonful of dry anthrax in an envelope shut down the United States Senate in the fall of 2001. In other words, Russia has always felt unjustly insulted and discriminated against. And the thing it wants most in the world is to be heard and reckoned with. Vladimir Putin has always known that, and most probably felt the same way too. He felt this resentment towards the West. So he indulged that feeling of resentment in Russians. After exhausting conventional ways to achieve respect, like promoting Russian culture, science, sports, and waging fair trade, Russia has resorted to cheaper tactics, calling the West out for its own crimes, no matter real or fictitious, like spreading LGBT propaganda or corrupting Ukraine. Находясь у власти 20 лет, вы не считаете, что вы несете хоть долю ответственности за плачевное состояние этих отношений, особенно на фоне действий России в последние годы? от аннексии Крыма до использования химического оружия на территории Великобритании, в городе Солсбери, или, или нет, или вот российские власти белые пушисты? По сравнению с вами, да, так и есть, мы белые и пушистые, потому что мы пошли на то, чтобы освободить от определенного советского диктата те страны и народы, которые хотели развиваться самостоятельно. 
Мы услышали ваше заверение о том, что НАТО не будет развиваться на восток. Но вы не выполнили своих обещаний. Now, was a promise like that really made? The narratives around that alleged promise are so abundant and different that Joshua Yaffa has even called it a geopolitical reshowman moment. Despite what the truth may be, the Russians are sure that the 1990 agreement on German reunification, brokered by Gorbachev, prohibited any further eastward NATO expansion. So by Copton, Poland and the Baltic states, NATO has tricked Russia. <laughs> Ja, ein bisschen Worte, dann gehst du doch nach einer Fall.